this edition of Southern Newsweek, Special Rigs for Special Kids bring smiles to both young and old and tears to the event's organiser. There's a new tug in town, although difficulties unloading it meant it arrived late. And Dunedin Hospital celebrates 150 years at the Great King Street site. Kia ora, I'm Holly Buchanan. The city hummed with the sound of hundreds of large engines recently. They were participating in the Special Rigs for Special Kids charity event. And given it was the silver anniversary of the event, some felt it proper to surprise the founder with a memento. It's all about the kids and the rig drivers that chauffeur them. Yesterday the 25th running of Special Rigs for Special Kids was the biggest to date for the annual charity event with hundreds of trucks driving children around the city. More than 200 trucks of all Ashri shapes Education and sizes Union. drove from Sandra the starting Bray grid in South Dunedin, is widespread going out to Mosgiel and over Three Mile Hill, before arriving back at the Edgar Centre for a party with drivers, children and caregivers. Later, at a function for the drivers, the biggest surprise of the day was meted out to Rigs for Kids founder Greg Inch. And we all sat round and we looked at one another and says, do you think we should do it again? We thought it might go for one more time. And that was 24 years ago. Jeez. But Brownie's been hard at it. And I think it's only fair to see that you unveil this. On it is every company, person, whatever, who has donated goods for the auction. So, go for it. Along the way yesterday, what the day meant to people of all ages was evident on every face. It's not about the companies, it's about the kids, it's about the families, it's about all getting together with the sponsors, all the people that contribute and making a day that, that really is well worth it for everybody. I've been here a few times, yeah. yes. Oh, cool. And um, what part are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to honking the horn and talking on the thing. Just the whole interaction from drivers to children to everything. It's, it's just, a, just a fantastic day. It, it humbles you to know that so many people give up a day to come and help support these children. Because I'm all about the kids. I just think it's such a fantastic initiative and it's, a, it's just a way of contributing. Greg Inch has put in all this effort and contribution in for 25 years. There's truck drivers that have driven every year for 25 years. If I can get along here once every now and again, I'm, do a drive, that's just my little bit to add to it. I liked how everything was loud yep. and the roads were all bumpy. Each year the event raises funds through an auction and this year is no exception with many organisations due to receive donations. Daryl Baser, 39 Dunedin News. The City and Regional Councils are joining forces in an attempt to engage with South Dunedin. Their aim is to find out what residents want. A series of meetings are taking place with senior staff from both councils on hand to share ideas. The South Dunedin floods were more than a year ago and there has been much fallout since. However, it's time to plan for the future. That's the message from Dunedin City Council Chief Executive Sue Bidrose. Yeah, it's really easy for councils to do stuff two residents, two people, it's easy to do stuff for people. This one we're really keen to do this with people because you know climate change, sea level rise, groundwater rise, uh, wherever you, if you don't believe they're happening well then it's not an issue and you don't need to worry and if you do the good thing is they're happening slowly and we've actually got time to take our time, form collaborative relationships as we explore the options and do the right thing at the right time, not throw things at money that might throw money at things that might not work or make random guesses at what we think will work. You know, this one we have to get it right and we have to keep people informed and my commitment is to be much better at that. She says there have been a number of meetings with stakeholders and public meetings are planned for next week. Next Thursday and Friday um, the, at the Gasworks Museum 
Uh, and that's to talk to people about what went wrong last year, like which bits of our equipment malfunctioned. I think people are aware of that, but to talk to them about what we're doing to, to fix that, to make sure that our system, how the system works, and what we're doing to make sure it runs as well, you know, as well as it ever has. Um, and also some incremental improvements that we're examining that we might make over time. Uh, the OSC are there to talk about the history of South Dunedin and uh, what the ground is made up of, why rising groundwater is an issue in South Dunedin, and some of the things we can and can't do about that. She says both the Dunedin City Council and Otago Regional Council are working well together and want to work with the people of South Dunedin for the best possible outcome. Daryl Baser, 39 Dunedin News. Port Otago has taken delivery of its brand new tugboat. The tug travelled the seas in style aboard a specialist heavy lifting vessel called the Delta Grutch and despite some issues on the day it's now plain sailing for the Arihi. Nearly there. Port Otago's new tug, the Arihi, arrived at Port Chalmers this morning and was due to be in the water around 10am. However, things didn't go quite to plan. Port Otago Chief Pilot Hugh Marshall says the Arihi has come a long way to be here, albeit on the back of the Delta Graft. It, uh, it loaded a, a small uh, tug workboat in uh, Tusla in Turkey um, on the uh, the end of June this year. Uh, it's been on transit through the Mediterranean, through the Suez Canal, calling at various ports on the way. It called in at uh, uh, this, the Seychelles Islands, now Mauritius on the way here, and then it's, uh, it's done various ports in Australia, delivering a small tug work boat called the Arihi. Marshall says when the Arihi is lifted off, it'll be powerless and will need work. Uh, once in the water, the vessel, uh, the tug will get, uh, it doesn't have any power on board, no fuel on board at present time. It's going to go, it's go uh, tied up alongside of one of our other vessels and then it'll be taken to a berth where we start commissioning the commissioning and uh, preparation process for to get this vessel into, into action. The Arihi was made earlier this year and has a gross tonnage of 145 metric tonnes. The name Arihi comes from Auntie Alice Karatai, who was born in 1861 and was the granddaughter of Chief Karatai. Daryl Baser, 39 Dunedin News. A local man is officially the best apprentice butcher in the country. Ben Henry has taken out the award after placing second in the competition last year. He's now off to the international competition in Australia, but says the win isn't going to his head as his workmates keep him grounded. He's a meat packer, he packs meat. And now he's number one in the country for it. Centre City New World Butchery Apprentice Ben Henry was recently named the Competence Butcher Apprentice of the Year after cutting down the competition in Auckland. However, the former university student believes it won't go to his head as his co-workers keep a sharp eye on him. No, I've definitely not. The guys around here keep me pretty grounded, which is quite nice. They, they whip me back into shape. That said, he's looking forward to where the wind takes him. It is absolutely unbelievable. I, I'm heading places where I never thought I would go before. Uh, I get to go over to Australia and compete in the International Butchers Competition, the World Butchers, I believe it's called, which is really cool. So I get to compete on the 10th over there. Henry outlines what he had to do in order to come out on top, a cut above the rest. So we had an interview as well as a written exam going over the entire industry trade. We also had a two hour cutting test where we had three subprimal cuts, so three bits of animal and we had to break it down, produce some amazing, interesting uh, creations as well as some compulsory cuts. So we were judged on our housekeeping, knife safety, yield of the, and speed, as well as creativity and this display. Competition judge Matt Grimes believes the butchers really stepped up their game for the grand final. Ben Henry is off to represent New Zealand in just over two weeks' time. Daryl Baser, 39 Dunedin News. It's 150 years since Dunedin Hospital opened on Great King Street. A celebration was held in the hospital's chapel to mark the anniversary. It included speeches from Commissioner Cathy Grant along with staff serving and retired who shared their memories giving thanks for 150 years. 
Amihi Fakato and Karakia opened proceedings as former and current staff celebrated the sesquicentenary of a hospital being at the Great King Street site. First Speaker, Southern District Health Board Commissioner Cathy Grant, says the hospital has come a long way since its humble beginnings. The Great King Street site, on the other hand, had been adapted for hosting an industrial exhibition in 1865 and was subsequently converted for hospital use, with 130 patients transferred to the new hospital at the end of August 1866, 150 years ago, and the hospital has remained on the site. Chief Executive Officer Carol Heatley paid thanks to the people responsible for the art on the hospital walls. I would like to acknowledge the contribution of the Arts Advisory Committee and especially that of Barbara Brinsley, who is the person responsible for the marvellous art that we see around the hospital today. Dean of the Medical School, Professor Barry Taylor, recalls the beginning of the Otago Medical School. The shift to this particular site, um, on exactly 150 years, years ago tomorrow, um, was, uh, was important and followed almost exactly um, nine years later by the formation of the medical school. The first lecturer was appointed uh, nine years after the Dean Hospitals uh, came to the site. Current Mayor Dave Cull also spoke before Otago Clinical Skills Laboratory Manager Leslie Dennison shared her memories of nearly 50 years of nursing, which opened the floor for people to share their experiences. And that's been a really wonderful experience for me because the, the hospital and the medical school are symbiotic. One can't exist without the other. This medical school produced the first woman graduate and the first woman professor in this country. <coughs> so uh, there are a lot of firsts and there are many more to come. Thank and how good I feel to have been part of this place for 60 years of experience. So long live it and let's keep the spirit and the health of all of us up and running. After the exchanging of memories, guests moved through to the main foyer where Cathy Grant unveiled a plaque commemorating the occasion before a large cake was surgically divided. Daryl Bazer, 39, Dunedin News. Coming up on Southern Newsweek, the unprecedented popularity of a motoring museum in Southland could result in expansion. And we'll find out why art lovers in Invercargill are in for a real treat. Welcome back. A new exhibition space has opened up on Don Street in Invercargill. It showcases works from an art gallery which has been closed to public viewing for over two years. And organisers say it is an opportunity for locals to see artworks from a gallery that belongs to them. A pop-up exhibition named Central Exchange has opened on Don Street in Invercargill. It showcases a number of artworks which have been unseen by the public for over two years. Curator Stephen Davies says the pop-up gallery is an attempt to expose these deserving artworks. It meant that uh, we've had to look at, at different ways of, of um, sort of um, exhibiting work from the collection and holding other exhibitions and so this is a, the latest um, event that we've uh, created uh, to get our collection out in front of our, our public, our community. The pieces were held at Anderson House Art Gallery, which was closed to the public in January 2014. A seismic assessment concluded the building had a high risk of falling in an earthquake. Davy says it is important to differentiate the new venture from the old building. We um, felt that uh, changing our name back to Invercargill Public Art Gallery would in, um, sort of help us reconnect with our community and. and, and, and sort of provide that sort of ownership um, to the community of, of the collection. Davies and assistant manager Claire Baker went through the entire collection at Anderson House. They set out to choose works to showcase that represented the broad range in the collection. We ended up with 90, 90 images of artworks um, and we wanted to show to the businesses that we were working with you know the scope of art that, that the collection has. Um, 
and also through that provides some education about art, that it's not just a, a painting that looks like a real subject, you know, it can be a whole range of things. Baker says the exhibition has had a positive reaction from local businesses who selected their favourites from the group, and much interest from local visitors. Jack Conroy, 39, Dunedin News. A new shared space for developing businesses opened in the city recently. The project aims to house Dunedin's newest and brightest tech businesses. And the Dunedin couple behind the venture hope it'll enhance the city's creative culture in a controlled fashion. Businesses under a microscope. Husband and wife team Jason and Kate Lindsay recently purchased number 8 Stafford Street with big plans for its development. Scientists use petri dishes to study the interactions of organisms and culture. The team behind Dunedin's petri dish wish to foster a culture of collegial businesses which can grow in an organic fashion. Kate Lindsay is the face of the business and admits being a bit surprised with just how busy they are. We allowed a few people to move in early and just the word of mouth, people have just been dying to come in here. It's just, it's a nice space, it's friendly, it's warm, inviting. Um, people are very productive here, there's a lot of collaboration going on. So yeah, no, we're thrilled. Jason Lindsay says his background in the American media industry is helping with the business. My background is, is as a filmmaker, so um, a lot of the people that we've initially tried to get interested in or other people that work in film and television uh, and other kind of creative media. The pair have made quite a few changes to the building to get it to fit their needs. Kate Lindsay describes what it was like when they moved in. The uh, condition of the building when we bought it was uh, fairly similar to what it is now. The space that we're in at the moment was a Pilates studio. Um, so we've just put up a few walls, made some offices, tidied it up with some paint and some windows and made it into a very nice office space. James Lindsay says just like a petri dish, they hope their organisation can help businesses germinate further. Um, and one thing that we think is really great about that is the more you've got creative people in the building, um, the more that there's that pool of creativity to draw from, that, which is really great. The next step in the organism's future is a move into the adjacent room where this space should, they hope, be a hive of activity. Daryl Baser, 39 Dunedin News. Invercargill's recently opened Transport World is celebrating its quick success. Visitors from all over the country have come to see the extensive vintage vehicle collection and an addition of a large motorcycle collection means the premises will need to be expanded, a move it's hoped will put the facility on the map. Transport World opened its doors to the public in December 2015 and has been a resounding success. Around 34,000 visitors have been through the new home to trucks, classic cars, wearable arts and themed bathrooms. Tourism Operations Manager Hannah White says visitors are coming from far and wide. It's been a real mix of people from um, outside of Southland and locals, um, but yeah, it's just been really great to see the response and um, we've been very pleased with those numbers. On top of the large display of four-wheeled vehicles, Transport World has come into possession of a motorcycle collection numbering almost 300. Previously owned by Nelson couple Tom and Heather Sturgis, this addition requires expanding to new premises. What we're doing with Classic Motorcycle Mecca, um, simply because the collection is so large, um, it's just not practical to house it within the same space um, as Transport World. So we're redeveloping a new space for Classic Motorcycle Mecca in the centre of town. The Classic Motorcycle Mecca will open in November, coinciding with this year's Burt Munro Challenge. Following the release of the world's fastest Indian film, the Southland Motorcycle Club decided to launch an annual event to celebrate the famous Southland icon. It's just, it's multiple disciplines um, and it's really just a celebration of all things to do with motorbikes really. And people come from all around um, New Zealand um, and increasingly more from overseas to come to this event. So yeah, it's a really big and quite popular event in Southland. The museum team continues to work diligently to ensure Transport World and Classic Motorcycle Mecca become Southland icons in their own right. Jack Conroy, 39 Dunedin News. After the break on Southern Newsweek, is the city about to get a youth music venue? We take a look at the efforts of two locals and we find out what musician Shane Carter has been up to.
Welcome back. Venues for young bands to perform on a large stage have been scarce in Dunedin for a number of years. Dedicated youth venues have come and gone, but now a local event coordinator has teamed up with young musicians and hopes a youth bandstorm can become a regular event. Showing the way. Pro event manager Ian Chalmers and Sam Chin from Sammy's show 15-year-old Carl Brinsden around the stage at Sammy's. Ian Chalmers says for many years he's had young, louder style bands coming up to him at events, asking if they could play at afternoon and family style shows. Well, these young bands say, look, can we play at Brighton Gala Day? Can we play at Party in the Park at Mile School? And basically their style of music is not uh, necessarily family friendly for those sorts of events. And uh, so I said to them jokingly at the start that, hey, I'll give you a, a night at Sammy's. Well, We've got to think about this and we thought, well, it could be a really good um, platform for them to learn on. At 15, guitarist Carl Brinsden has been playing guitar for 10 of his 15 years and appreciates having an event to play at. Yeah, I think it's really, really important for young people to sort of get into the habit of finding gigs and stuff without the alcohol side of things so that you can actually enjoy the music rather than having the alcohol and stuff involved with it. He says playing regularly will improve the band's stagecraft. Venue owner Sam Chin recently lost his licence to sell alcohol and is welcoming the all-ages aspect. He believes the bands will get a lot out of performing on the big stage through quality gear. Bandstorm begins around 7.30pm this Saturday. Daryl Baser, 39 Dunedin News. The Dunedin Public Art Gallery has become home to a very large virtual resident. It's part of an installation by Scottish artist Douglas Gordon and the gallery says it's a coup to have an artist of his calibre showing in town. Playing dead in real time. Elephants are big, I mean really big. Unless you've seen them up close, you just won't believe how mind-bogglingly big they are. Scottish artist Douglas Gordon filmed a circus elephant obeying a series of commands in a New York studio while filming it. The result is now at the Dunedin Public Art Gallery. Director Cam McCracken says it's a total coup for the city to have this exhibition here. It means a lot to the gallery to have a work by an artist of the stature of, of Gordon um, showing with us. Uh, we have a, a wide remit um, in our exhibition programme and uh, international content is really important to us. McCracken says one of the technicians from Douglas Gordon's gallery stayed in the city for a week overseeing the installation of the work. We have had the pleasure um, of having one of the technicians from Douglas Gordon's studio uh, be with us for a week uh, to help us install the work. Um, but we have made investments in technology and uh, AV technology and we've bought some screens uh, especially to show the work. So it's a, a very top-notch uh, technical presentation. The blurb promoting the exhibition mentions the elephant is subject to forces beyond its control. McCracken describes the exhibition and when asked was as certain as he could be that the animal wasn't mistreated in any way. An, ele an elephant uh, in an art gallery um, space in New York, um, it's, an, it's a 19 minute um, presentation and the elephant uh, is, is standing up, goes through a routine of standing, uh, lying down and, and, and then getting back up uh, to her feet. He says when you look at the video, you can see the animal isn't showing any signs of distress, describing it as a happy and well-treated animal. Play Dead Real Time is on at the Dunedin Public Art Gallery until February next year. Daryl Baser, 39 Dunedin News. And finally, Shane P. Carter first rose to international fame with the band Straight Jacket Fits in the late 1980s. In more recent times, he played in Dimmer and lately has been playing under his given name. And he recently made a return to a familiar stomping ground. Returning to the Captain Cook Hotel more than two decades after first playing there, Shane P. Carter saunters in to survey the revamped location. And he clearly remembers playing here before. I think I played the cook with the double happies actually, which would have been what the 80s or something. Yeah, mm. and um, yeah, but I spent a lot of my um, teenage time not being allowed to go to the cook, and then I chopped chips at the cook because my old man used to run the bistro upstairs, 
and uh, we found out some uh, old school Dunedin, uh, Dunedin Sound connections because the Kilgars from the clan, their dad used to manage the place in the, in the 70s apparently. Carter's had a solid career in the music industry, first coming to international recognition in a straitjacket fits, and later in Dimmer when the band was signed to Sony Music, who he says dropped the band after just one album. Many lesser musicians are crowdfunding music releases, which is something Carter chose to do with his new album, The Offsider. When I embarked on the record about three or four years ago, it looked like the whole record industry was collapsing, which was actually quite a good thing because it was the collapse of the evil empire. And I thought, well, okay, I'm not a, ch you know, the way things are going, record companies are becoming more and more irrelevant. So I'm going to do this record under my own steam, and with home recording and all that kind of stuff, you can, um, you know, you can make the majority of the record uh, that way. He says he didn't want to appear to be begging for money but believes it's a more direct way of getting people to support what musicians do. Carter is a well-known musician in credible music circles, with strings of critically acclaimed records to his name. But he admits he's struggling and doesn't know how other musicians cope financially. I don't know how musicians are supposed to live at the moment, actually. Um, you know, stuff like Spotify and all that kind of thing. Well, I was talking about the collapse of the record industry. Um, it's just the man has come back even harder. So now you've got Spotify that makes billions for the people who run that. You've got the record companies who are happy because they get to recycle their back catalogues once again. But now the artists get nothing. Well, what do they get? 0 0.008 cents for every play or something. However, if there's one side of Shane Carter that's mellowed a bit, it's his music. He's left his guitar mostly in the case and admits to being a newcomer to playing piano. I've never tickled the old, old Joanna, no. Um, this is a completely new undertaking for me. Um, I'd never played piano. Um, but I, I've always liked minimalism and I've always believed that you can build a song out of one note, which uh, is pretty lucky that I believe that. <laughs> Shane P. Carter plays upstairs at The Cook this Saturday, fresh from shows in Auckland, Wellington and Christchurch. Daryl Baser, 39, Dunedin News. And that's all for this edition of Southern News Week. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter, or you can keep up with Dunedin News via our website, dunedintv.co.nz. I'm Holly Buchanan. Thanks for watching. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand.